Welcome to another look at our wonderful biodiversity. In this one, we're going to look at the different kinds of wetlands that we find. So what are wetlands? It's an ecosystem that is saturated or flooded with water, either seasonally or permanently, and where oxygen-free processes takes place. Let's look at the difference between land, lakes, and wetlands. With an ordinary piece of land, we find the soil on top and groundwater underneath. It can be a few meters deep or very, very deep. With a lake, we have a depth of water and at the bottom you find soil. Whereas with a wetland, you have saturated soil with a thin layer or sometimes a meter or two thick water on top of the surface. There are two areas where we find wetlands, either inland or on coastal areas. Inland, we divide it into lakes and mires. Mires can then be subdivided into bogs, fens, marshes and swamps. On the coastal areas, we have mangroves, estuaries and coral reefs. A bog is a freshwater wetland with soft spongy ground consisting mainly of partially decayed plant matter called peat. Deep layers of decaying moss forms this peat material. A bog is a mire that due to its location obtains most of its water through rainfall. Bogs store and release water to and from the surrounding land but are not connected to a system of lakes or streams. Bogs are nutrient poor and generally have low plant diversity as a result. Fens, on the other hand, are connected to slow but flowing water of small lakes and streams. Bogs are usually acidic where fens are alkaline. A fen is located on a slope or a flat or even a depression and gets most of its water from soil or from the groundwater. One of the seven natural wonders of Africa, as well as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, the Okavango Delta in Botswana is an intermittent wetland formed when seasonal rains transforms this otherwise dry area into a green expanse teeming with elephants, lions, buffalo, wildebeest, hyenas, crocodiles, and even the occasional rhino. A swamp can be described as a forested wetland. Swamps consist of saturated soils or standing water and are dominated by water-tolerant woody vegetation such as shrubs, bushes and trees. Marshes are continually or frequently flooded by nearby running bodies of water that are dominated by emergent soft stem vegetation and herbaceous plants. Coastal plain estuaries or drowned river valleys are formed when rising sea levels flood existing river valleys. The estuaries are home to unique plant and animal communities that have adapted to brackish or salt-like water which is a mixture of sand and the ocean water. An estuary is a partially enclosed coastal body of water with a brackish nature. It has one or more rivers or streams flowing into it and has a free connection to the open ocean. Estuaries forms a transition zone between river environments and maritime environments. Mangrove swamps are coastal wetlands found in tropical and subtropical regions. They are characterized by halophytic or salt-loving trees and shrubs and other plants growing in brackish to saline tidal waters. Mangrove trees dominate this wetland ecosystem due to their ability to survive in both salt and fresh water. Coral reefs are large underwater structures composed of the skeletons of colonial marine invertebrates called coral. Each individual coral is referred to as a polyp. Coral polyps live on calcium carbonate exoskeletons of their ancestors, adding their own exoskeleton to the existing coral structure. So in summary, 
We have lake wetlands inland and we have coastal wetlands. And there is a clear difference between bogs and fens as well as marshes and swamps. And in our coastal regions, the mangroves, estuaries and coral reefs provides us with protection. I hope you have learned something about wetlands and their importance to us. Please like and subscribe and share this with your friends. And also check out these other playlists that will teach you more about our wonderful biodiversity.